Glory to God. Before the throne is where we come to offer praise and see wisdom. You have turned the wheel that separates Kayabata. No more outside. Yes. for being the strength when we are weak you have been our strength oh thank you even when I fall your hand you, you still, still they hold my hand, hand. love of my soul and you, you they break my heart, heart. I'll sing about you Oh, 
that God was to be unfaithful when we are unfaithful. Imagine that God was to reward us according to our weaknesses. But I said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. No, really, many times before God handled, but even at that, He still holds our hand. Can we just sing that song one, one more? Daddy, where Papa? Daddy, where
speak to everyone under the sound of my voice. Let everyone hear you. And let everyone that hears receive life. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning I'll just continue with the teaching on death as a pillar of life. Hallelujah. Death as a pillar of life. Thank you, Jesus. God is very mighty here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, let everyone encounter you this morning. Let everyone meet you personally. May they hear beyond what I'm saying. Let them hear you. Minister to everyone. I pray that these hearts are open, O oh God, to have interaction with you this morning. I pray that these ones release themselves their spirit, their soul, their bodies, even their emotions, that they will interact with you this morning. Let deep call on to deep. Let it be a real time of encounter. Let life flow from you to every one of us. In Jesus' name. I can go teaching this morning. Hallelujah. So like I was saying, um, when I began to teaching on death as a pillar of life, of course we've established death as a pillar of life and then um, I remember saying that sacrifice or death is a means of preservation. The best way to preserve whatever you do not want to lose is to offer it to God. Give it up. Let it go. For God's sake. Hallelujah. And then we went further and we established that um, death, this death leads to righteousness. He that is dead, Bible say, is freed from sin. He that is dead, the way the um, Passion Translation puts it, says, does not have the ability, can no longer sin. Hallelujah. Amen. So we established that death leads to righteousness and then we also went further last Wednesday to establish that this death is a gate to revelation that through death the seals that that um, veils or that covers or that seal um, the book of revelation is broken and through that we have access so we established that death brings access to revelation hallelujah glory to jesus so i'll just continue so i think this should be like number three or number four or so so this death that we're talking about leads to fruitfulness death leads to fruitfulness some of you who are born in lagos might not understand the the way um seeds what happened to seeds when you plant it or have you ever been to the farm before hallelujah all right, so those of us who grew up in the village you have the privilege of explaining that to you my father was a farmer so we played with plants in the farm hallelujah 
So if you have something like a yam seed, for instance, if you plant it, you know, that was um, the amazement earlier was, I mean, as a child, just seeing that ah, the yam that we planted is decaying. Why you who do not know anything about that might be worried. The farmer himself is happy. Hallelujah. That that is happening. Because that means a new seed, a new fruit or a new plant is about to come up. Hallelujah. So if you plant something like a yam seed, you discover that as it germinates, if you go and dig that place where you planted the yam, you see that the yam itself is already decaying. It will keep decaying until it will decay completely. Hallelujah. So as it is decaying, a new one is coming up. The one you go to harvest, the one that you eat, is a new one. Hallelujah. Usually what they do, they just cut the yam in pieces, just small this thing, and go and plant. But after that is decayed, and you now go to harvest, you harvest a very big yam. Hallelujah. So death brings fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Some of you probably have seen an orange tree or a mango tree. You know that um, what was planted was just a seed. Now, but when you see, do you see the seed? No. The seed itself has to die for the tree that continues to bring forth fruits year in, year out to germinate, to grow. Hallelujah. The weather is very comfortable. Make sure you are not, you are not um, sleeping. If you are praying, I want to be seeing your eyes while you are praying. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So, I was saying that this death leads to fruitfulness. John chapter 12, verse 24. John chapter 12 from verse 24. Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. If it dies, what happens? It brings forth much fruit. Death leads to bringing forth much fruit. Remember what we talked about is death. It is you giving up your life for Jesus' sake. So if Bible says that death brings forth much fruit, it means that you giving up your life for Jesus' sake would make you fruitful. You bring forth much fruit. Little wonder it's a covenant that those that serve the Lord are always fruitful. Say that you shall serve the Lord your God. Exodus 23 verse 25 and 26. Say I will bless your bread and your water. Say I will take sickness away from the midst of you. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in your midst. The number of your days I will fulfill. Once you get into this dimension. Say no more barrenness. No more unfruitfulness. No more miscarriage. So those that surrender their lives to Jesus are always fruitful. It is a privilege. It is a privilege to surrender your life to Jesus. As you surrender your life to Jesus, you become fruitful. The more you surrender your life to Jesus, the more you become fruitful. That's to say, the more you die, the more fruits you bear. Except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. Many people are still alone because they are still intact. They have refused to give up their lives. Check that area of your life where you are not bringing forth much fruit. And ask yourself, how much have you surrendered that to God? Hallelujah. It is not possible that anything surrendered to him cannot bring forth fruit. It is the nature of God to bring forth fruit. But you see, this fruitfulness comes through death. Even God himself. You know that there was a time when Jesus was called the only begotten son of God. For God to have many sons, he had to give up the only son that he had. For Abraham to become the father of all nations, he had to give up that promised son that he had. Hallelujah. It is that way, it is through God giving up his only begotten son that he now has all of us many sons in glory. Hallelujah. If God, God would obey that spiritual principle, who are you not to obey it? See, God has set the principle and 
there is no man who can violate it. Hallelujah. It is either you obey it or you don't profit by it. But I would encourage you, obey it. You can't break the rule. That is why giving makes you giving makes you have more. There is he that scattered yet increases. And there is he that withholds more than his meat and he gets poorer and poorer every day. Hallelujah. And everyone always have something to give. To say you do not have something to give, that's poverty mentality. Never think it. Bishop Oedipo told a story about when he didn't have money to give offering. He would get up and go to church before any other person and go and sweep the church, keep everywhere clean and say, God, this is my offering for today. As I do not have money to give, the money or whatever would have been given to the person who would keep the church. Now, that's what it is. If 1,000 naira would have been paid to the person who cleaned the church, when you come and clean the church, that's synonymous to giving an offering of 1,000 naira. Hallelujah. There is nobody who does not have something to give. And like we established last week, most importantly is giving yourself hallelujah say so offer your body as a living sacrifice to god say so that is the true way to worship him except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die it abides alone for if it die it, it bringeth forth much fruit like we said, death is to surrender it to God. So if you want that business to bring forth fruit, surrender it to God. You want that career to be fruitful. You want to have a fruitful career, surrender it to God. You want to have a fruitful relationship, surrender it to God. Many people don't understand that. You remember that Hannah had been going to Shiloh every year. She was barren, could not give birth, was asking God for a child continuously. Until he got to that year, I don't know who, who taught her that wisdom. And she went to Shiloh and she said to God, If you will give me a child, I will give him back to you. God, whatever you are giving to me is already surrendered to you. That year did not pass. Hannah gave birth. Immediately she surrendered it to God. She conceived and gave birth. Surrendering it to God, giving it to God makes you fruitful. Unimaginable fruitfulness. Say he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. We have dealt with that so well last week. How if you love whatever you love and you want to keep whatever you cannot give, say you lose it. But if you give it up to God, you will keep it. You will keep it. You will keep it. NLT puts it this way. He said, those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Those who care nothing for their life will keep it for eternity. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, maybe you can take that and see if there's a way you can fix it. Thank you, Jesus. So, fruitfulness comes through sacrifice, through death. You have a seed and you want it to multiply. Bible says that as long as 
you keep it to yourself it will remain that way but no it can't go through outside tell them it has to go through inside thank you Jesus sorry for the interruption hallelujah you have a seed and you want it to bring forth fruits you must have to plant it and planting it sowing it is a sacrifice you are literally losing that seed but you are losing it in hope hallelujah you are losing it in hope you are losing it in hope in hope of a better one in hope of a, a, of multiplied fruits first corinthians chapter 15 first corinthians chapter 15 i'll read from verse 35 resurrected. The media people, you can title today's teaching um, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. The death that leads to life and the increase. Yeah. The death that leads to life and the increase. I can almost hear someone saying, how can the dead come back to life? And what kind of body would they have when they are resurrected? foolish man Bible says don't you know that what you sow in the ground doesn't germinate unless it dies and what you sow is not the body that will come into being whether it's wheat or some other seed hallelujah you know that for instance you plant a, a mango uh, seed is not mango seed that comes up it's rather a mango tree hallelujah so what, the, what you planted is not actually what comes up and the beauty of this is that it does not even germinate it, you will not see anything until it dies hallelujah we're going somewhere and what you sow is not the body that will come into being Verse 38. But when it dies, God gives it a new form. A body to fulfill his purpose. And he sees it. And he sees to it that each seed gets a new body of its own. And becomes a plant he designed it to be. Hallelujah. So when it dies, that God gives it a new body. To fulfill the purpose that God himself designed it for. Hallelujah. You 
get to understand as we continue that you are not designed to fulfill your destiny in the natural package in the natural form there is need for a new body hear what bible says here says that's verse 38 says but when it dies when it dies god gives it a new body a body to fulfill his purpose so it is impossible for a man to enter into god's purpose for his life without going through death for a man to enter into god's purpose for his life he has to die first it is true that there is a purpose that god designed for you before you were created but it cannot be accomplished with the natural body and natural ability god has given you that as a seed to sow when you sow the seed there would come a new tree a new body you saw this body that's why i say offer your body to him as a living sacrifice you saw this as a seed then he gives you another body there is an impartation that comes by the way of death and that is what enables you that is what empowers you to be able to fulfill his purpose hallelujah when it dies god gives it a new form a body to fulfill his purpose and he sees to it that each seed gets a new body of its own and becomes a plant he designed it to be someone is entering into that which god designed him to be this morning in the name of jesus you are entering into that which god designed you to be this morning in the name of jesus by the anointing of God upon me, I cancel, I take away. It is eradicated every form of delay in your destiny in the name of Jesus. God has been emphasizing this teaching because it is time for you to manifest. All flesh is not identical. Animals have one flesh and humans human beings another birds have their distinct flesh and fish another in the same way there are earthly bodies and heavenly bodies there is a splendor of the celestial body and a different one for the earthly a different one for the earthly there is the radiance of the sun and different radiance for the moon and for the stars even the stars differ in their shining and that's how it will be in the resurrection of the dead the body is sown in decay but will be raised in immortality it is sown in humiliation but will be raised in glorification it is sown in weakness but will be raised in power if there is a physical body there is also a spiritual body hallelujah you know um last week we began to read where he said um that the resurrection life of jesus may be made manifest in this my mortal body in this in this humanity hallelujah now it's showing you how the exchange actually happens and it is good to know that this body might be sown in decay but not raised in decay it will be raised in immortality it is sown in humiliation but it will be raised in glorification look at it sown in decay you give to god that which can decay he gives you that which can never decay you see why giving your life to God is the only way to preserve it you give to God that which cannot last he gives you that which can last that's why I usually say that serving God and receiving his blessings is a glorious exchange you do for God what any man can do he does for you what no man can do 
sown in decay raised in immortality sown in humiliation and that's the truth the process of sowing can be humiliating do you know how Jesus died it was, the, it was a shameful death death on the cross it is like the death of a criminal not just anyhow criminal the worst of criminals son in humiliation but you know how he rose up raised in glory hallelujah amen that's what bible tells us that he that goeth forth weeping bearing precious seed he shall doubtless return with a shield in his hand rejoicing hallelujah amen son in humiliation son in humiliation it is possible that you are currently overlooked by everyone around I show you how to rise in glory surrender to Jesus give yourself to Jesus yes surrender your body like I taught you last week how to surrender your body to Jesus surrender your body to Jesus let him become your Lord let your mouth say only what Jesus would have you see let your eyes see only what Jesus would have you see let your legs go only where Jesus would have you go let your hands do only what Jesus would have you do and you will see yourself rise in glory and that is your portion from today in the name of Jesus you are rising in glory you are rising in glory so even though you've been despised that no nation wants to pass through you that nobody wants to associate with you say I will make you an eternal excellency a joy of many generations I am showing you how that comes about you have to surrender if you hold on to yourself if you hold on to that which you have you will remain in that state of humiliation you remain in that state of decay but when you give it up oh you rise up in glory hallelujah that's how bible says that we are dead and we are alive is hid with christ in god and so where christ which is alive shall appear then shall we also appear with him in glory hallelujah we appear with him in glory sown in humiliation but raised in glorification it is sown in weakness but raised in power hallelujah ah you see apart the apostle paul said you know he said this i sought him that i should re remove from me three times and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness look at how it is done the apostle paul when he let he said now i rejoice in weaknesses someone is looking at my weakness no i'm rejoice i rejoice because when i am weak then he is then i am strong and this strength is not just human strength it is his own strength his own power so sown in weakness you might be weak but surrender it to god surrender to god and you see yourself manifest such a strength that anyone everyone will look at you and say where is this strength coming from where is this strength coming from I've told you that when I was in medical school a brother gave his life to Christ who was my roommate watching me do the things I do how I was doing then he said he had always been expecting me to break down one day he asked me bro sure you know the four sick say four sick <laughs> that's not part of the the covenant hallelujah he said this one too this that you are kind this kind that you are enjoying say I want it too hallelujah such magnitude of strength just amazed him he was like where is this coming from such a strength so I don't know what might be your weakness whatever it might be ah, that which the devil taught that he would use to destroy you let me show you how to make it a source of strength that will go back to destroy the enemy surrender it to God surrender it to God yes surrender it to God that thing that the devil called weakness that 
Something that the devil looked at and said, this is how where we are going to enter through and destroy his life. Just surrender it to God. Surrender it to God. Whatever might be your weakness, physical weakness, emotional weakness, any form of weakness, surrender it to God. Oh, maybe you were the one, the kind of person that you love money so much, surrender it to God. And you see it become such magnitude of strength that God will use to destroy the kingdom of darkness. That when Bible said that you go to judge sin, that's what Bible meant. That which sought to destroy you, you will rise to destroy it. Maybe you were the kind of person as a lady that wants to just see any man in trousers. You know, your body can no longer be there. Or you are a man and anything in skirts cannot pass you by. Surrender it to God. And you see it become a mighty, mighty strength that God would use to destroy the kingdom of darkness. Whatever might be your weakness. I attended a conference in, in Port Harcourt, I think 2016. It was titled Breakout Conference. They were very mighty speakers in that conference. It was, I think, a three or four day conference. But the peak of that conference was at a point when two people came a man and a woman they are not married they are two they came from two different people i don't i didn't even know where the organizer of that conference got them from but these were people who were held bound in sexual addictions i mean count any form of sexual addiction they were held Hallelujah. The lady was, you know, when we say top class prostitute. The same with the guy. A gay. And you know, oh my. Any form that you could think of. But at that point, these men were, these people were, people had been delivered. And that, at that point, that was all, that was the job they do. The job they do is to go from conference to conference. Sharing testimonies of their deliverance. Oh, I tell you, that was the peak of that conference. Apart from certain encounters I had in the conference. I'm not sure I can remember the things that were taught then. But their own session, I can't forget. There was when they made their own altar calls, there was no other preacher who had such magnitude of people come out like theirs. That was what the devil thought he would use to destroy them. But they surrendered it to God. Surrender that to God, and you will see God do a mighty work with it. In my hundred level in the university. You know, as usual, there were many um, freshers welcome program. But the one I cannot forget was the one that was organized by a fellowship, BLW. That they invited um, this minister, Buchi. He was one of the ministers. And before the preacher would come up, who eventually didn't come up anymore, <laughs> he read his song and wanted to explain the idea behind the song who gave the order to free the criminal who gave the order to set the guilty free we were lying down for execution the soldier man was ready to fire i looked and i was guilty but i did not want to die this way so i cried out to a god i didn't know save me i will save you lord my ebenezer you said the guilty free. I know his name. I know his name. His name is wonderful. I know. I know his name. I know. I know him. I know his. His name is Jesus Christ. I know. Can we sing it one more time? I know him. 
while he was in school and so one of the days they went robbing armed, rob armed robbery and it was during the military regime in Nigeria they were caught and once you are caught in that kind of this thing it is to fire you so they tied them and the day came when they, when they were to shot them to fire them they said they took them to the water side and usually what they were doing was once they want to shoot anyone, they would untie the person and ask the person to run. As you just want to move, they will shoot you and bam, you are in the water. So he said, as he watched this and it was going on, there was, he knew that these church people had talked about one God, but he didn't know the God. And there he prayed, he said, this God they've talked about, they say you are a deliverer. I don't know you, but if you can save me, I will save you. This will be the last day I'll do something like this. And he got to his turn. The commander commanded for him to be untied. He was untied like the rest. And they asked him to run like the rest. But fortunately, he began to run. And there was no command to shoot. You know you cannot shoot until you are commanded to shoot. There was no command to shoot. He was running thinking that they would shoot. They did not shoot until he was free. That's why he was asking who gave the order to set the guilty free? Who gave the order to free the criminal? But he surrendered to God. Hallelujah. And today he's a mighty minister. A very great one. I tell you that was like when he explained this, this story behind this song there was no other preaching. The minister could not come up because of the things that happened afterward, they just had to make altar call. Hallelujah. Just a man sharing his life story. I'm telling you that that which the devil sought will be the end of you. Can be a stepping stone to glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you this morning. That which the devil has sought to use to destroy your life. Today, it becomes a stepping stone to your glory. In the name of Jesus. You only have to surrender it to God. You only have to surrender it to God. I know his name. I know his name. His name is Jesus Christ. I know his name. So Bible says, verse 43, The body is sown in decay. But will be raised in immortality. It is sown in humiliation, but will be raised in glorification. It is sown in weakness, but will be raised in power. If there be a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. For it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul, the last Adam became the life giving spirit. However, the spiritual didn't come first. The natural precedes the spiritual. Hallelujah. This becomes possible through that spiritual ability. But you hear this. The spiritual does not come first. The natural comes before the spiritual. The spiritual doesn't come first. The natural comes before the spiritual. It is the sowing the giving up of the natural that opens the way for the spiritual. So this morning, as you saw the natural, you enter into the spiritual in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't usually do this. I don't know whether it's physically here or online, wherever you are. Someone, God is launching you into spiritual, supernatural dimension of finances. And the requirements that you are going to sow a seed, a natural seed, this morning, 
that is going to cost you something. I don't know who the person is. Hallelujah. If you are not the one, if you are the one, the Holy Ghost will tell you. If you are not the one, don't go and sow seed that you go and be crying. You know? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not sure I've ever done this in the course of my preaching since I began preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is saying so this morning. Hallelujah. And I pray for you. You are entering into that dimension this morning. And nothing will stop it in the name of Jesus. That which is spiritual is not first, but that which is natural. The natural comes before the spiritual. As you sow the natural, then the spiritual comes. As you sow your natural ability, then the spiritual ability comes. As you sow that which can perish, then that which cannot perish comes. of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father. chapter 10 verse 12 say so to yourself in righteousness reap in mercy break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you so to yourself righteousness reap in mercy break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rain righteousness upon you you know what a fallow ground is an uncultivated land a land that has not been cultivated that has not been in use <laughs> there are dimensions there are graces there are impartations have been released upon you that de there are deposits in you that God has put in you that have been li lying dormant, that have been lying idle. There are abilities, there are visions, there are dreams in you that have been lying dormant. This morning they are coming alive, they are coming into use. And Bible said you should break up your fallow ground, you break it by sowing. Hallelujah! You break it, you break it, you break it. You are entering into new dimensions this morning. Every uncultivated land within you become fruitful from henceforth in the name of Jesus. That dream that has not manifested, manifest from henceforth in the name of Jesus. That vision that has not manifested, that has been lying idle, that has been packaged and kept waiting. Are you back at Abaya? The waiting time is over. Now it is time for manifestation. In the name of Jesus, it is time. Break up your fallow ground. So to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. It is time to seek the Lord, for it's coming to rain. That which is from above, which is from heaven, will come upon you like rain. In the name of Jesus, the grace of God, the mercies of God, the abilities of God will come upon you in abundance like rain. In the name of Jesus, this morning I launch you into a season of abundance. In the name of Jesus, open up. I am with the Father. Open No Open Can you lift your voice and pray the language of the Spirit for one minute? Call on to thee. Open I am fired up. Kabwa sheke to Marabadaya. Channels of my spirit. Oh. 
there is a breaking forth this morning. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. No boundaries, no limit. Oshina brando shivaka tayaya Riaka katwaka katwaka toste ke temu shabana idaya Jeri kana bana bana bada 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 baga daga daya Ria baba de ke dia bara suya bado baya sadaya It's a season of fruitfulness. New dimension of fruitfulness. New dimension of fruitfulness. 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 In the name of Jesus. From heaven, nothing concerning you will be barren. Ah, everything you touch, it shall bring forth more fruit. It shall bring forth much fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. In the name of Jesus, everything you touch shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, you are fruitful. Hallelujah! I call you fruitful. You are fruitful. You are fruitful. You are fruitful. Academically, you are fruitful. Kaya Baba Shuta Bayata. Financially, you are fruitful. Kabushia pato zibadaya. Materially, you are fruitful. Mentally, you are fruitful. Biologically, you are fruitful. Every dimension of fruitfulness comes to you in abundance in the name of Jesus. So, die as a seed. Sow your body as a seed. And resurrect as a tree bearing fruits. Resurrect not just as a fruit, as a tree bearing fruit. You know, when you sow one orange seed this year, it will germinate. And when it begins to bring forth fruit, it brings forth fruit this year, next year, keep bringing fruit year in, year out. That's what I want to tell you. See, Bible says we must not get weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not faint. Never give up in your sowing. Never give up. Never give up. You know the day you plant, the, you sow the orange seed. is not the day that you get the orange fruit. No. There is a time that it has to die. And when it's dying, you're asking yourself, what is happening? What is happening? I just sowed the seed. Have you never, maybe you never experienced the body's fruit. Sometimes you hear the word of God. Go and sow. And you think that once you sow, things will just blossom. You sow and things seem to get worse. Hey, things are dying. It is the process of the process of death. You remember the man that um, Jesus brought that brought um, his son to the disciples of Jesus for them to heal that they could not heal. And then when Jesus came, prayed for the boy that they let out Jesus. Why couldn't we? And they said, because of your own belief, for this kind going not out, by, but by prayer and fasting. But when Jesus prayed for that boy, do you know what happened? It would be an understatement to say that his condition got worse. Bible said the boy fell down and died. Hallelujah. Now, imagine, just imagine the scenario. The disciples of Jesus, theirs was not that they could not, theirs was just they could not cure the boy. Now, Jesus, the master now came and said, bring him to me. As Jesus laid hands on the boy, the boy fell down and died. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Jesus brought him up. That's why you must, your faith must never grow weak. Hallelujah. Jesus took him up. You cannot come and spoil my show. I prayed for you to leave. You leave. You not just leave, you are healed. And the boy got up healed. Hallelujah. And he gave him back to his father. So it is possible you are sowing. It is possible you are at that phase. Where you are doing. And instead of things getting better, it is getting worse. You hear the word of God. Until the seed dies, it does not germinate. And that's why you must not give up. If you give up, 
no that's what we used to do that time when i te- I, I, I told you when we were still younger if we when if our parents not go to the farm with us and we get here and see I don't even know what made us to start digging where they planted those things. We'll go and be digging. If we discover that it's, it's decaying, we'll bring it out. Because it was decaying. That's why we removed it. That was ignorance. Hallelujah. Not knowing that it is the, through the process of decay that what we're expecting would come forth. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you are at that stage, just keep rejoicing. Just keep rejoicing. That's why the Bible tells us that it is with joy that you draw water out of the well of salvation. Keep rejoicing and do not give up. For there is hope for a tree. There is hope. There is hope. The hope of harvest. That even though it be cut short, yet at the scent of water, the tender branches shall grow. They shall sprout again. And they shall grow and blossom. And the water is the word of God that you are receiving this morning. So it is time. Even though you might have been cut down. And it, you are, it's just an ordinary storm. It looks as though nothing is happening. Oh come on. Oh come on. There is a scent of water this morning. And you are about to sprout. To germinate. To rise and blossom again. In the name of Jesus. So. Do not give up. Do not give up. Stay with the seed. Stay with the seed. For God is not unjust to forget your labor of love. Bible tells us that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Number next. Okay, so wherever I stop in this particular pillar of life, that's where we will stop. You read it in the book. When the book comes out, you read the remaining the book. When it comes out, Hallelujah, Amen. Because I'm just checking time, and I'm like, wow. Um, okay, Hallelujah. Number next, this death leads to a new life. It leads to a new life. I've already explained to you using a yam seed that it dies to bring forth a new seed. This death leads to a new life. And this new life is a victorious life. A glorious life. An indestructible life. A sin-free life. A life of dominion. You have already seen where we read in 1 Corinthians 15. The natural dies to give room for the spiritual. Hallelujah. The natural dies to give way for the supernatural. The supernatural life. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 from verse 4. Romans 6 verse 4. Say, Therefore we are buried with him, that's with Jesus, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Hallelujah. As Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we enter into a new life. Into a new life. That's what the Bible tells us. That if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So Galatians 2 verse 20 tells us that I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in Christ, I live by the, the, the faith of the Son of God. That's the one. That's, that's how I live now. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So through this death, we enter into a new life. You know, Bible says if we have been united with him in a death like his, so it is those who are united with him, those that partake in his death, that also partakes in the resurrection that brings a new life. Assuming you have, let's say, um, two um, mango seeds, 
and then you kept one in your house and you went to plant one now when the one that is planted that would decay and bring forth um, fruits when that one is bringing forth a new tree the one in the house should it be expecting itself to also bring forth new no so bible says those that are partaking that have taken part in his death those that have fellowship those that have um, been united with him in his death they are also the ones that will be united with him in his resurrection to partake of the new life and I've shown you how to partake in that death spiritually it's just a once and for all thing by faith we die with him and resurrect with him but then physically in the body is an everyday thing we die daily partaking of his suffering hallelujah and once that is established the new life is guaranteed the new life is guaranteed and ladies and gentlemen it is a life of victory it is through this death that we enter into that life of dominion look at Hebrews Hebrews chapter 2 Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 6 channels of my spirit open up and we the father open Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 6 say, But one in a certain place testifies saying What is man that thou art mindful of him Or the son of man that thou visitest him Thou madest him a little lower than the angels Thou crownest him with glory and honor And this set him over the works of thy hands You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. Verse 8. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is, put, that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God might taste death for everyone hallelujah <laughs> can I have two people come let me explain I've explained this before I want to explain it again come let me explain hallelujah glory to God all right, someone stand by my right. Someone by my left. So today, for the sake of this teaching, you are Jesus. Hallelujah. For the sake of this teaching, you are man. Don't worry, you are a man of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, it says that the same way, this is this man made a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor, everything in the world everything in creation put in subjection under him that's man now this is another this is now Jesus just as this man was made a little lower than the angels he also made a little lower than the angels just as this man was crowned with glory and honor he also crowned with glory and honor just as everything was put in subjection under this man, everything also was put in subjection under him. But then he said, there is something that we are seeing. 
We do not yet see all this in this man. We do not yet see all things in subjection under him. But we see it in Jesus. And he says, we see it in Jesus for the suffering of death. For the suffering of death. These things are made manifest in him. Hallelujah. So a life of dominion was given to him. A life of dominion. The same way it was given to him. Was also given to him. Yet we do not see the manifestation of this life. In him. It is still his. He has it. It's a potential. Waiting to be made manifest. It is his portion. But remember the Bible tells us. That the hair, as long as he's a child, differed not from a servant. A servant is not entitled to any inheritance. Even though it is his, yet we do not see him manifesting it. But he, for him, we see him manifesting it. He is manifesting it. And the Bible says that what makes the difference between him and him, what makes the difference between the two, is that he has tasted death he has not hallelujah so death launches us into that new life where we begin to manifest the dominion that God has prepared for us hallelujah thank you very much you can go back, go back to your seats for the sovereign of death crowned with glory and honor so today can you show yourself that you may enter into that life of dominion which God has prepared for you. There is a lot that God has in store for you. Ah, if I know the thought I think towards you, he says, they are thought of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. The expected end is that end that he has in mind when he created you. Hallelujah. Remember that all your days have been recorded in his book. So that which is written in his book, that's the expected end. Now, Bible is showing you how to enter into it. It is by the way of death. As you saw this natural body that you carry, as you saw this natural ability that you carry, as you saw this natural possession that you have, the spiritual ones will be made available to you to replace that, that you may be able to manifest, to fulfill his purpose. Hallelujah. You're entering into God's design, God's purpose for your life this morning. In the name of Jesus. So, if you see yourself, when you subject yourself to this death, keep rejoicing because you are entering into purpose. You are entering, you are, you are beginning to fulfill that which God prepared for you. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I round off with this. Second Corinthians chapter 4. From verse 8. Oh, Baku Shabada Kapayata. <laughs> so we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are they called according to his purpose. So it doesn't matter how things might be. Just imagine when you are losing that seed that you that you had. When that which you planted is decaying. For someone who is ignorant, he will panic. But for the one who is knowledgeable, he will rejoice. So you see why two people might be passing through the same thing. One is rejoicing. The other is panicking. It is a function of light. I showed us last week where the Bible told us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that though we might be pressed on every side, yet we are not crushed. We don't give up. It is because of the light that I had talked about. The, that great treasure that dwells in us. Those that don't have it, they are crushed. They give up. But when you have an understanding, even when the seed is decaying, you'll be rejoicing for the hope of the new fruit that is coming. Second Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 8. Bible says, though we experience every kind of pressure, I'm reading the Passion Translation, say we are not crushed. 
Say at times we don't know what to do. But quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but not out. We continually share in the death of Jesus in our bodies, in our own bodies, so that the, re the resurrection life of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity. It will be revealed through what? Our humanity. This resurrection life of Jesus, this glorious life of Jesus, this new life can be revealed, can be manifested through this, our humanity. But that happens as we partake in the death of Jesus we continually share in the death of Jesus in our own bodies so that the resurrection life of Jesus will be revealed in our humanity we consider living to mean that we are constantly being handed over to death for Jesus sake so that the life of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity so so then Death is at work. So then, death is at work in us, but it releases life in you. Hallelujah. You heard it. It releases life. How can it be that death releases life? Yes. Bible says so. Death is at work in us, but it releases life. I know you might be going through pain, but that pain releases life. You might be going through a crushing, but it releases glory. Hallelujah. There is glory. That's what the Bible says. That, oh, Maku Shabbatai. In verse 16 and 17, or verse 17 and 18 of this um, um, Second Corinthians chapter 4. That our light affliction, which is for a moment, it works for us a far more ex, uh, exceeding and eternal way of glory. Why we look not at the things which are seen. But are the things which are not seen. There is a hope which no eyes have seen yet. That's what we look at. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. That's not even entered in, into the imagination of man. The things which God has prepared for those that love Him. But these things have been revealed to us by the Spirit, as it is being revealed to us this morning. For Bible tells us that the Spirit has been given to us that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God. Hallelujah. We have access to them by the Spirit. And so we keep looking at them. And so looking at them, we do not faint. We do not give up. The crushing in you. Yes, that difficult situation. That pain. That sorrow. That shame. Oh, it's working to bring forth glory. No, Jesus said, Bible tells us looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy, that glory that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. I know you might be in a shameful situation. Oh, Marcus Shabbatia. A despising situation. A humiliating one. But remember what he says. Son in humiliation, but raised in glory. Hallelujah. You are rising in glory. You are rising in glory. You are rising in glory. And for your shame, you receive double in the name of Jesus. You might be knocked out, but not out. I beg you, don't put a full stop where God has put a comma. That there is a bend does not mean that that's the end of the road. Ayakuba Shabbatai. Where God is taking you is the place of glory. Don't give up. Don't write yourself off. Believe what God says concerning you. Believe God's word concerning you. Or whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? The report of that your neighbor? Of that your friend? Of the one mocking you? Of those that say that you cannot be useful that you cannot that you are good for nothing of those that despise you whose report will you believe the report of men or the report of God let God be true and every man a liar believe what God has said concerning you 
believe the word of God. For every other thing will change, but the word of God will never change. That pain, that sorrow, that humiliation, that shame is just for a moment. And it's working for you a far more eternal and exceeding weight of glory. Enter into it. Don't give up. Be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Join the light of those who through faith and patience patience is required to inherit the promise. So don't give up. Don't give up too early. If you give up now, you've given up too early. Don't give up. Endure till the end that you may receive the crown. And those that laughed at you will come to laugh with you. In the name of Jesus. Something great is coming out, out of you. Something great is coming out of you. Something great is coming out of you. In the name of Jesus. So knowing this. We continue. To press. I want us to get up and pray. Let me stop here. Get up. Let us pray. You might be knocked out. You might be knocked down. I mean. But not out. You might not know what to do. But quitting is not an option. You have gone too far to go back. No. You might be persecuted by others. But understand that God has not forsaken you. You might have pressures all around. You are being pushed left, right and center. But you are not crushed. You cannot be crushed. No, no way. Kabaya Sunanda Subaya Susia. This death that is at work in us leads to life. And it leads to increase. I wanted to pray. It is time. It is time to experience that increase. Mayazwa shika toboshu na bagadaya. Ni prakaka tuatata baruzia paro sigata. Reketini suzia badaboshi mando siza. Rista kaboto prikato shagadabada. Irazwa gagashwate suzia de. Shedira gasu na bro shekede. Meri bada prakato sheki duzada. Iyara katu katabata payanda. Shedia baba kakatu ate sunadayana. Ira prazuzi abato senkru shibada. Nesido koto mase kunadi adazwa. Ijara bakwa kuatete barasu kapaya. Rekia kwase te maruzi abadabaya. Ikrane suniga poshi nagabada. You receive strength this morning. Strength is released unto you. Are you banakuza badu abakataya? What is that weakness? You, you are releasing it as you release it this morning. Strength and power is being released unto you. Are you bashwatakata? There is a release of strength. There is a release of power. Amayu azakwa kwatena. Bayada. 
Ibrakata kutabaya koto pesi zuzia Riabakatoni pasozia da katozia Nikrakatu katabaya takatuta Ibrakatu bataya zuzia Anything in you that is not of God Anything in you, anything in you Every form of weakness Every form of sickness Every form of delay Every form of obstacle Give way now Anything in you that is not of God Any form of addiction Give way Maswase ketua basuzi atata Arwa katakua sedete kwa rata Ibrakanua seka kutabayeta Eruba na kwa sete kumazu badaya Every other name Give way Let it be only God it is time to manifest God's abilities. It is time to manifest God's dimensions. It is time to manifest the anointing. It is time to manifest His grace. It is time to manifest God's dimensions. of God be consumed by the presence and the power of God in the name of Jesus I pray for you this morning anything in you that is not planted by God be rooted out right now anyone who is sick in the body you are healed that sickness disappears right now never to occur again in the name of Jesus I pray for you every obstacle, every limitation anything that has kept you low in the name of Jesus be taken away right now be removed right now in the name of Jesus oh, I declare fruitfulness ah, from this week you will know 
that something that a dimension of God has come upon you I release upon you fruitfulness in everything you do everywhere you go be fruitful I speak to you be fruitful be fruitful increase multiply in the name of Jesus thank you father the grateful fruitfulness rests upon you in the name of Jesus thank you father we give you praise in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah you can have your seats Thank you.